So this is gonna be the first video in a series of where I break down um, some simple circuit blocks that I use in a lot of circuit designs. This first one is gonna be a backup battery that's used in a circuit to use a coin cell in the case that the supply from the wall is disconnected, you can still use the backup and keep your RAM and all of your other settings uh, without them being cleared. But before I get into that, um, one thing I wanna mention, if you like this video and you like the videos I've been doing, please make sure to subscribe and also uh, leave a comment on a circuit you want me to go into or any other suggestions that I can work on and I'll definitely take a look at it. So the basis of this circuit is built around a synchronous buck boost converter that takes the coin cell and amp uh, boosts the voltage up to a nominal five volts. Now the uh, converter that I use is a TPS61222 and it really doesn't matter what it is exactly. You just want to make sure that it has an enable pin. So when the enable pin is low, it's not going to be drawing any power or not a significant amount and it's not going to be outputting any current when the enable pin is low. So for the specific circuit that I'm gonna be going into, I used a barrel jack from a, a DC five volt supply. So to start off with the main input, I use a, a DC jack, and in KiCad, you wanna make sure to label your input voltages, both the positive and ground, with a power flag, and that just makes sure to tell KiCad that both of these are inputs. And um, also we want to label our input ground to a ground uh, net, like that. And then for our main power supply sense, this backup battery is only to be used to keep the memory alive. It's not going to supply enough power to run the microcontroller. We assume that it's going to be on wall supply virtually the entire time. So this circuit is not going to be charging the coin cell. It's gonna be using a non-rechargeable cell because when the microcontroller is in sleep mode, it's drawing nanoamps to microamps, so it'll last years without having to replace that battery. So we wanna take our main power supply and bypass the uh, boost converter because this is at a nominal five volts. So what we can do is label the output as just a five volt share. So this is our output supply that goes to the rest of the circuit. It doesn't care where it comes from. This is just either one of them gives it five volts. And right here, what we want to do is have a diode to make sure that we can use logic on this line to see if the power supply is plugged in or not. So you're going to want to use a low drop off uh, diode like a shot key diode and depending on which one you use you're only going to drop a tenth of a volt up to maybe half of a volt so we connect our diode here and then this will give us our 5 volt supply from our DC jack now for the boost converter we're going to connect it just like it is in the recommended data sheet and I'll go through that right now, but it's just what's found in a normal synchronous uh, regulator's data sheet. Okay. 
Okay, so the boost converter is set up now and it takes our coin cell battery into the input and then we'll output a five volt uh, supply, a uh, five volt nominal voltage from that. And again, in this, um, on this leg, we're going to want to add another low drop off diode and this one isn't necessary to have, but I would really suggest it because if you don't have this and you have power from the jack and this is turned off, you're gonna get an applied voltage to both the feedback and the V out pin. For this regulator, that's okay, but you typically on an output supply, you don't want to apply a voltage to it just because it can mess up the internal circuitry when it's not the one driving that voltage. So I always will add them in in cases like this, even though you do get that voltage drop from it. Now, what we need to add is some sort of logic that when our power supply from the wall is disconnected, our enable pin goes low. So what I decided to do for this is use a standard um, inverting op amp or a standard inverter with a Schmidt buffer. And this is a NC7SZ, but pretty much any will work. You just wanna make sure that it works with the logic you have and the input voltage works with the coin cells supply. So what we'll do is throw on a label for the coin cells battery supply. And this should not be five volts, this should just be VBAT because nominal it's gonna be around three volts. So we add that to power it and the reason we want it to be powered by the battery is this inverter has to work even when we don't have a supply here. So if we did it on this five volt shared, we would get a latency when this drops off. So it's easiest just to use the battery. Now for the other, we'll just add ground to it. And now we need to add a label up here, which we can just call five volt wall. And this net, is going to be high when we have the jack uh, connected to the wall. But what we also need to add is a resistor to pull it down when it's not connected. If not, when it was disconnected, it would be floating and it could mess up the inverter. So we will add the ground and I hate having a ground up in the air, but in this circuit, it's kind of hard to not have that. So you can use whatever value you usually use for your pull downs. I use just a 10K. So now if the jack is disconnected, it's pulled to ground. If it's connected, it is pulled to five volts. So this logic controls what goes into our uh, inverter. So we feed the inverter, our five volt wall, and now we'll add a label for the enable pin, and that will go here, and that we can feed into the output of our inverter. So, uh, I did not copy that. Okay, so once again, we'll go th I'll go through the logic of this. So if we have a five volt supply, our five volt wall is high. That makes our enable pin low, which shuts off this boost converter. So that means our coin cell, the only draw on that coin cell is going to be from our op amp and from the standby power of the voltage converter, which both of those are in the nano amp range. So when it's unplugged, it gets five volts straight from the wall, and that's how it's gonna be operating almost 100% of the time. Now, if our DC power is disconnected, our five volt wall is pulled to ground, which makes our, our inverter 
output a high logic to the enable, which turns on our uh, regulator, which makes our five volt shared be supplied from the coin cell. Now there is one last thing we have to address, and that is some sort of capacitor on our five volt shared line to make sure the lag of the voltage does not shut off our circuit on this outside. So you want to look into how long your voltage converter takes to power on. Normally it's in the, yeah, it depends, normally in the couple millisecond range. So you can calculate what capacitor you need to stabilize this until the voltage regulator turns on. I've used anywhere from 100 microfarads up to 500. Uh, you can calculate it or just populate it with a size and you can try a couple different ones. There's really no secret to it. Um, just make sure it's big enough to supply the drop and that'll be good. And with this circuit, once again, the coin cell will not be charged. So you need to make sure on your circuit to the right of the five volt shared, you make a interrupt pin or something based on this five volt wall. So when it's disconnected, it will put the microcontroller to sleep. Because if you don't do that and it's drawing milliamps, it's gonna drain the coin cell in hours or a couple days. The goal of this is solely to keep your volatile memory from disconnecting. So to keep your RAM still powered so you don't have to use an external EEP ROM or something like that. So that wraps up the first series in the quick circuit blocks. And once again, uh, let me know in the comments of any others you would like to see, and I will take a look at it. Thank you.